I swear these other podcasts are just a waste of time. I'm skipping through them. I'd rather listen and change my mind. Wes and Nick always help me through my daily grind. Your favorite guys, your favorite lines, change my mind. I swear these other podcasts are just a waste of time. I'm skipping through them. I'd rather listen and change my mind. Wes and Nick always help me through my daily grind. Your favorite guys, your favorite lines, change my mind. Yeah. This is always weird when I got to be the one that opens up the show, but Wes is away on his honeymoon, which also means that I have to sit across from Tim the entire show, which I'm happy about, I will I will say, because um, we got a fun show planned for you guys tonight, a fun topic that Tim and I can only tackle together. But first, Wes is on his honeymoon. He had a great wedding. Uh, the ceremony was beautiful. The reception was a load of fun, can, Tim. Can you can you turn down your computer? My, that. Oh, I thought that was your computer. No. No, I'm a professional. I already know to turn down mine. I think I pressed the mute button twice, and then... Oh, my bad. I didn't... (laughs) (laughs) I don't think the audience could hear it, but for me, it's... Yeah, no, no. I was annoying me, too. I was like, why does does Tim still have the audio on his computer? Did did you ever get to do that when you were on the radio? Did you ever get to tell a caller to turn down their radio? I've never... Nope, I've never gotten the chance to do that. Oh, that's my favorite thing to do, to, uh, like, yeah. to tell somebody, uh, oh, hold on, I've always wanted to say this, please turn down your radio. At some point, I think I'll get the chance to do that. It's Yeah, I'm, I'm stunned, because you would think the, the audience that I was dealing with, they would make that that mistake a fair amount, a lot of- You said that, not me. Older people. Yeah, there were some younger people, but there was a fair amount of older people. Anyway, uh, this is the Change My Mind podcast. We are on episode 34. Wes is supposed to be in the Bahamas. He found the one spot that did not get hit by the hurricane, thank the Lord. I don't know if he's there yet or if he is traveling. Uh, I don't remember the name of the venue he was at, but it was in Falmouth. I was up all night long. Wes was going crazy the entire night. Obviously, a very happy man. Um, Rightfully so. Julia is the best. But we're not here to talk about the honeymoon and his wedding and everything. Tim and I are two free men enjoying our lives and enjoying comic book stuff that we have going on. We got some news to get to, Tim. Uh, first, and I this is so this is so weird for me jumping through different things. I'm not used to doing that with this show at all. And I feel like you should be the guy who's running the show because you're the one who's always a one in every show that you do. Yeah, but it's fun to watch you squirm. Yeah, well, I appreciate that very much. And I'm supposed to be keeping track of the time, and I'm not even, and I haven't even started the clock yet. So I'm gonna have to go back and figure that out too, the hard way. Oh, right. Anyways, so first, uh, saw Joe Russo and Anthony Russo talk to the Toronto Sun, I believe it is the Toronto Sun. All right, two for two so far uh, about how difficult it was for the MCU to deal with. Sony when it came to Spider-Man right. and obviously they're not happy when it comes to you know Spider-Man being out and Anthony Russo was a little bit more civil about it but Joe Russo said it was tenuous it was a tenuous fraught union throughout the whole process but I will say stepping back and trying to be objective as possible that I think it's a tragic mistake on Sony's part to think that they can re- replicate Kevin meaning Feige's uh penchant for telling incredible stories and the amazing ses- success he has had over the years, I think it's a big mistake. I couldn't agree with them more. So just look at it like this. Spider-Man Homecoming, Spider-Man Far From Home. Yep. Two of the biggest grossing movies, especially comic book movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it, what did they do wrong that Sony should be like, no, nah, I think we're going to take this back. What do you think now you're going to ride the coattails of what they've done? It's all money. Like all the, next, down to. the next movie that you make, first of all, You've lost a good portion of the Marvel audience now who are going to protest. Yeah, for what sure. There are definitely going to be people who don't want to deal with it. So if you thought, oh, if we take back Spider Man, we're going to get that endgame money for ourselves, <laughs> you were wrong because yeah, right. if 10% of that audience decides not to go see your movie because of it, that's a significant loss of revenue now. Mm-hmm. So the, the fact that they are being stubborn about this instead of just saying, you can take the character. What was the original deal that they had? They, it was they, made, they the Marvel made mon- their money off of um, not uh, like, paraphern- like merchandising. Yeah, merchandise. That's what it was. And then most of the money that Sony made came off of the, the ticket, box office. the box office. Yes, that was like their primary. That was like I think it was like a 90, 90, 90 10 split, something like that. So here's what you and do. they wanted it to be fifty fifty. Yeah, well, um, MCU did. So if you're Sony, you say to them. We'll do a 50-50 box office split, and we'll be happy with just that. Yeah, because you don't. there's no risk on your part. 
You're not you're not losing any money. Like you're not m- spending any money. Now you have because, to go spend that money and then make that back and then somehow still make more than what they were making. You know, half of a billion dollars is still five hundred million dollars, which exactly. was more than you're going to make with your track record now of putting out these movies. Exactly. And how much was Marvel investing in in Spider Man Homecoming? Let's say that they invested what two hundred million dollars, right? That's their loss, not right. Sony's. Now Sony has to go and invest that amount of money. And then they have to make that back and more to then still try and maybe make what they were making. And it's all this extra work. Now, we don't know what the fine print is of the licensing deal to begin with, where uh, they might have to put out a Spider-Man movie of their own every certain number of years in order to retain the rights. Mm -hmm. So by not putting out the movie on their own, are they running the risk of... The rights reverting back to Marvel anyway. I haven't heard anything about that. Yet. That's what had happened with the X Men movie, right? Yeah, and I don't think I don't. Think, I mean, the uh, Fantastic Four movie. I like, don't think that they're running into. They're going to run into that. I mean, they they've had plans. Like I heard before, we really we knew that they were going to that Spider Man was going to go back more than likely at some point. I was caught off guard because I thought there was going to be a third Spider Man movie, well, like solo movie. And and you would have thought that since it worked out so well, Sony would smarten up. Yeah. You, you would, yes, yeah, you, well, no, I didn't think they would, Tim, if I'm being totally honest. Because I thought or, that it, they, they had Venom, they have, they're doing Morbius, like they, and I, that's what I had heard. They want to get Spider Man around all these characters. I just didn't expect it would be that fast when you really only have Venom so well, far. Well, let me ask you this Do you think Sony would be willing to let Marvel run the creative on the movies? Hmm. So you say to Marvel, whatever deal they work out, you're going to be the ones to to dictate the stories, and you're going to be able to make our movies released by Sony tie into the MCU. I'm 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 yeah okay I get well, what you're saying I didn't I did not think of that. But do you? I'm, having, I'm just having trouble like processing. What it you're could saying. be yes. that Marvel was just like, no, we're never going to do that because we want to have ultimate control. We over never everything. heard we never heard that pop up. I mean, yeah, but I guess. wouldn't wouldn't you pitch that as an idea? I because would, it's they do better than your movies do. If I'm Sony, I would pitch that idea, but I don't know. But Marvel's kind of the one that I mean. I know Marvel loses Spider-Man, but they have the court of public opinion on their side too. As much as some people will say, "Oh, Marvel wanted too much; they're asking for more and more and more." Why couldn't they just be satisfied with what they had? At the same time, most people are going to say, "Screw Sony! There's, what the there's, hell?" There's two. There's two things that are wrong with the situation. First of all, first of all, Marvel never should have sold the rights to begin with. But I understand where they were. You know, they're on the verge of bankruptcy. They did what they had to do. Mm-hmm. But we are also talking about something that's backed with the power of Disney. Mm-hmm. Disney could write a blank check to Sony yep. to get these properties back. I don't. I, do you think so? I think so. I think <sighs> they could not only not only could they write a blank check, but if they actually did everything the right way when they did this this takeover deal, yeah, they could have worked it out so that this was part of what came back to them in that deal. Maybe. I don't know the, the legalities of it, but I just have a hard time. I mean, look, we said that the Fox was never going to give over the X-Men and all their characters, and look what happened with them. Now, it was all, pretty much all of Fox that fell through, but, uh, man, I wonder if Sony just looks at this, though, and says that we, we'll get a consistent flow from this. It may not be that MCU money, but we're gonna get, we're still going to have this going on. If we just dump Spider-Man for that cash... Then everything else could be screwed because it just seems like more and more. Like I don't know how long it's going to last, but for right now, Tim, I would say for at least the next five years, the superhero movies are still probably going to lead the bus when it comes to box offices, right? For I mean, sci-fi is just always big. How much do you think Lucasfilm played into this too? Why? Because when Disney bought Lucasfilm, 20th Century Fox lost the Star Wars distribution mm-hmm. too, I believe. Right. So. I mean, part of that is probably. I wonder how much of it is a grudge. For was Sony having on, Sony, a grudge? on Sony's part? Why wait, 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 wait. that was a Fox movie, right? So, but seeing what happened to 20th Century Fox in oh, doing that, oh. I wonder if they're like, no, 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 no. Yeah, we'll go under. Yeah, if we do that. We're not going to let you do to us what you did to them. Right. That's it, that's what I wonder. How much of it would be the problem? I wonder if Spider Man is going to if they're going to do that to themselves though, in the end with Spider Man. I, I have a hard. I, I see your point. I just think like that I'm talking like where they would be mentally on this. Because what what else does Sony have as a franchise? I I couldn't tell you. I I don't, I don't think they have anything. I don't either. So, I mean, they're probably looking at it like you took 
I know that the X Men movies were good for Fox, it, but they it was weren't Star great. Wars. It was Star, Star Wars. Wars was their baby. Yes, I mean that was the one that was bringing home the cash for. Absolutely. Them. So they're looking at that and saying like, you weaken that company to the point where you could just go in there and buy it. Yep. Totally so screwed them. You, if we do the same thing, you're going to weaken it so that we're to the point where we have to sell to you. Yeah, absolutely. It, 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 and that's why. Yeah. And one thing I don't want, I don't want Disney to own all of this entertainment. No, no, that's not good. That wouldn't be good. That, would, that wouldn't be good for business because then they're going to do whatever they want. The fan service, we could end up losing out on that. You We're going to see, you know, everything's going to have to be special streaming services and all that kind of stuff. And we're not going to have the competition. You don't want a monopoly. You don't want a monopoly. I it's, mean, it wouldn't still be a monopoly. It would just be a monopoly over the genres that we're interested in. R- Yes, you know, with the still monopoly, other I mean, people would still be putting out films, right? And would have the option of creating their own content that would compete with it. But yeah, it could be it, it could be good for the smaller comics, maybe the DC comics, if they want. You know, if people get tired of what Disney ends up doing, if Feige ever gets tired of it, or if Disney just you know decides to get rid of them or whatever. I, the bottom line is, Sony, get smart about it. Mm-hmm. Now, speaking of getting smart, smart about something, how do you feel about this? A Rambo prequel. Um, I mean, I'm fine with it as long oh, as it's as, as long as it's not no. you know a CGI'd Sylvester Stallone. Hey, they did that with Schwarzenegger a few years ago in one of the one of the uh, Terminators. Yeah, they 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 basically took his face and put it on an, on a younger body. Yeah, like it was just too creepy to he deal with. He was really he was like five times bigger, right, in that body. Is that what that was? Right? Yeah, I I think I want to say sure. that was the one with Bale. I think it yes, was. Yes, it was. Yeah. Uh, but I'm, I want to say that it was, they actually took younger Schwarzenegger footage and used that to create the CGI model. Oh. So it was Schwarzenegger, but it was just Schwarzenegger before he was even a movie star. Gotcha. Yeah, when he was the big time bodybuilder. Yeah, because oh, he, so he even got smaller before he started doing the movies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> looks like, Except uh, Hercules in New York. I don't know how you move around like that as you, like when you turn into a bodybuilder like Especially that. if you've ever seen him in real life, he's not that tall of a guy. Yeah, that's right. He's not. He's like six foot even. So they make it look like he's a lot taller than yeah, he is. Yeah, he looks like a movies. mountain. Oof. But uh, in that, but in that, that like I guess role in particular, he looks like a mountain. Like he looks like he's six foot five plus for sure. Maybe I think Sony has the Terminator franchise now, so there's one franchise for them. Oh, that's mm. that's a real good one to have. Well, because uh, the new movie coming out it looks like it's going to be pretty good. It might be all right. But going back to the Rambo stuff. I'm I'm all set with this. I don't need a Rambo prequel. Now, at first, I thought, is he gonna do what you were saying? Is it gonna be Stallone and his face, uh, you know, CGI'd over and what is it, de aging? That it doesn't look like that's what it's gonna be. He wants it to be someone who's younger. He wants it to be like when he's in his teens, I guess. From what I was reading on uh, Screen Rant, I guess he spoke to them exclusively. I always thought of Rambo when he was 16 or 17. I hope that they can do that. The prequel. He was the best person you could find. He was the captain of the team. He was the most popular kid in school, super athlete. He was like Jim Thorpe, and the war was what changed him. If you saw him before, he was like the perfect guy. I mean, that doesn't sound like a terrible idea. I just, I mean, there's just so much. I get, I, I like how we get more of the shows and the films and everything that we like, but at some point... I, <laughs> At some point, I don't need to... Like, there are certain ones I just don't need more. Like, the bad boys, I, I think they're ending it at three, right? But Wes is all about it. You're in on well, it. Well, they might... We'll see what happens. I mean, if the third one does well, then you say, okay, we could probably squeeze out a fourth one. I hope not. Or maybe we could do a... You know, they what they can't... They can't do a prequel because they were in their 20s when they started. Yeah, So and Martin least, Lawrence looks least, like he's a little over the hill. Just uh, a little bit. Listen. <laughs> what? What? I thought that a new Rambo wouldn't work when the last Rambo movie came out. Okay. And I was wrong. I mean, it was a, it was an entertaining movie. Mm-hmm. Bloody as hell, but it was an entertaining movie. This movie, I think, works. The new one that's coming out works because they're bringing it back to what First Blood was. Yeah. So it's not, you know, it's going to have kind of that indie feel to it. Mm-hmm. And it's it's not going to be... You know, Sylvester Stallone versus an entire country's army. You know, like like Rambo three. Not a country's army, but it's gonna be. Uh, he's gonna fight quite a few people. It looks like. But it's still. Yeah. It's it's still it's the idea of this lone wolf going yeah. up against this group of people. Yes, a group of people. Yes. And and so, well, there was a group of people in the first movie too. Right, but th- isn't that the lowest kill count he has? 
Well, yeah, because it wasn't really that wasn't what yeah. that movie was about. It was right. it was legitimately so it's not gonna about turn a, into that. It was a legitimate movie about what happens when you come home from Vietnam and you're not accepted back into society. Right. So there was a, a real storyline behind it, and I think mm-hmm. this one's kind of going for that same thing. I think if if this is how you're bookending the story, I just don't know where you go with a prequel. Yeah. I mean, unless it's going to be like here's John Rambo in the Vietnam War. Well, and this is actually, I think, I think he's saying this is John Rambo before the the Vietnam War. And what's, have him as a. What's the point of that? As like a teenage kid, he probably went into the yeah. army when he was, and when he was eighteen, nineteen years old. That's what he's saying. Yeah, to so, show that he was the man before, like how war can change a human being. I'm not in on it, but that's what it sounds like I, he's pitching. I would guess from the first, you know, first blood from the first movie, I would guess that it was that he, you know, the 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 war broke him. Mm-hmm. So he might have gone in as like a gung ho all American like let's go serve our country kind of guy, and then he came out of it like, what did I give for my country, and what did I get back in return? Right. You know, which he kind of got away from when he became kind of the Captain America Rambo from yeah. Rambo Three. Yeah, yeah. But um, and even Rambo Two to some degree. But I don't know. I I I like the idea of exploring more from the character, but I just I don't think that it could sustain an. I don't know movie. how you do. It. I don't. I mean, that's his idea for the prequel. I don't necessarily. I don't buy in on it. I'm, I'd sooner buy a younger Rocky movie than I would buy a younger Rambo. You know what I was thinking about too when I saw this Rambo thing? I was like, wow, he's been around. I mean, he's been, obviously he's been around forever, but he has. I mean, he has Rambo. He has Rocky. I mean, those are some pretty iconic roles. And I wouldn't, you know, when I hear Sylvester Stallone, I think, hey, a guy who can barely speak, you know, any No, but that's not, that's not, that's, that's the way that he played those characters. Right. So, I, you know, people associate the Rocky character with how Stallone really is, but that Mm -hmm. was, that was just his portrayal of a guy who just got the crap punched out of him over the course of his life. Yep. And so it becomes kind of this caricature, but... Uh, if you've ever seen, there's a great That's how movie. How good he was at it. You ever seen the movie Copland? No, I have not. Great movie. That's yeah, him. Where uh, uh, Stallone plays a guy who is uh, he's he's deaf in one ear, I believe, and uh, he's he's kind of like the down on his luck, you know, city cop, you know, okay. town sheriff or whatever of a town where all the New York City cops live in New Jersey, mm-hmm. and so they're basically running all this crime stuff. These cops. And they're getting away with it because they're like, oh, Freddie the Sheriff is just, and that's really his name, Freddie the Sheriff, it, you know, he's not going to bust us. And then he actually, like, finds out they're doing this, and they're like, oh, come on, Freddie, you know, you're one of us. And so, but in that movie, he plays a guy, I think he has, like, a limp, and he's deaf in one ear, he's not good enough to be a real cop. Mm-hmm. So, like, that was when I was like, oh my God, Stallone can actually, like, act. And I forgot that in Rocky, the first two Rocky movies, he really is acting. It's a it's a good acting performance. Mm-hmm. By the time you get to three and four, now all of a sudden, like go watch Rocky one, Rocky two, and then watch Rocky three and four. Watch them all in a row, and mm-hmm. there's a jump from two to four, two to three, where all of a sudden it becomes so much more intelligent. Yeah, you're right. And you can understand what he's saying so much more. Yes. Like they turned him into a different kind of a character and it was yeah. less less acting and it was more kind of like Stallone as the action star. Right. Yeah, you yeah, yeah, get what you're saying. But yes. then and he also had some other movies like he played. Like his monologue in four at the end after he's you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to fight, uh. So but uh he also played Judge Dredd. That's right. Uh, he was in a couple of other pretty good movies. Demolition Man was a great movie. Uh, but then he also was in a movie called Stop and My Mom Will Shoot. With the old lady from the Golden Girls. Stop and my mom will shoot. Stop or my mom will shoot. Okay. And it's a very bad movie. It's like... Sounds terrible. It's it's considered to be one of the worst movies of all time, which is pretty hard to top because he made a movie called Oscar that's considered to be one of the worst movies ever made. But oh. uh, this movie is considered to be a bad, bad movie. And now the lore is that Schwarzenegger, because he was making all those comedies at the time, Schwarzenegger actually pretended to be interested in... And stop, or my mom will shoot because of the uh, rivalry those two had between themselves. Oh. He pretended to be interested in it so that Stallone would do it because it was such a bad movie. Oh. He tricked Stallone into making the film. Really? That's suppo- That's the way the story goes now. I didn't know Schwarzenegger was that smart. Oh, yeah. No, he's very intelligent. Well, he was, I mean, he was the governor of a state. The governator, I believe. You know, was. but it, it's just kind of funny. Like, those guys have had a rivalry. Uh, Bruce Willis, mm-hmm. all of them, to, even though they were all business partners in Planet Hollywood. Yep. Like that, and that's why you know they're all in the Expendables movies, which to me mm-hmm. is like, out of everything that came out of the the great action movies of the '80s, I love that it all led to the Expendables. It was series. awesome. Oh, those were so much fun. I could go for another Expendables or like five of those. Talk about you know, overusing uh, uh, material. Speaking of um, 
not having original material. Nah, that's not a good transition. Anyways, Haley Steinfeld is uh, an early talks with the MCU or Marvel, um, Disney, whatever, uh, to play Kate Bishop in the Hawkeye movie. This is per Variety and The Hollywood Reporter. I saw this on Geeks Worldwide. So she's the girl. She was in, um, she was a voice in Into the Spider-Verse. I believe she was uh, Gwen. I'm not certain on that. Didn't double check because Wes usually does this stuff. It, but I do know she was in Bumblebee. She was the, the, the lead female. I, I don't know much about her. Whatever. I just want to make sure those who don't who didn't catch that, I didn't see that till today getting ready for the show. Do you have any thoughts on her, Tim? I mean, I really don't care. Yeah. About I, I agree with about you. About Hawkeye. Yeah. yeah, I feel the same way. Like, I don't know why people get so fired up about him. I think that he's a lame character. It seems like such fake outrage. I thought that he was a lame character in comics. I I, I don't know. I don't think not, he's that not, lame in the comics. Not really think, down with I, the archers. I think he's just bland. Well, see, I like Green Arrow. I like Legolas a lot. You got to tell. You can't. Legolas is on a different level from all of, from both. Mm, of them. But I don't know. It just it's. It, I've just never been drawn to them. I'm not saying that it's bad. Mm-hmm. It's just never been my kind of thing. You prefer someone with a sword and they control um, that and work a sword. No, just, you know, no. Have a tight grip. And I know everything. what you're trying to say, but no. Uh, I, I, pref- I prefer characters that don't so, need a weapon. Just saying you prefer... Oh. I like characters that are the weapon. Oh. Uh, hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, last little bit of news we just saw. But I'll, I will say this. She was great in True Grit. True, oh, she's the kid in True Grit, yeah. right? Yeah. Yes. True Grit was a fantastic... I mean, generally, I'm like, why would you remake such a great movie? Mm-hmm. But that remake of True Grit stands alone as a different movie to me than the original, mm-hmm. even though they're pretty much the same movie. I got to watch that again. I saw that. I was too young to fully appreciate that. That was Brolin in Bridges, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Brolin. Matt Damon was in it. Matt Damon was too, in it yeah. too? Okay. But Brolin was the bad guy. Bridges was the... Uh, uh, the uh, Rooster Cogburn. Yes. Thank you. All right. Anyway, enough of that. Oh, no. Sorry. No, we got one last bit of news. Seinfeld heading to Netflix for 2021. Oh, see what you did there. You went from Steinfeld to Seinfeld. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, Top that, Wes. So, yeah, exactly. I totally did that deliberately. Um, anyways, it's going to... So, Seinfeld is going to Netflix in 2021. I, great. I mean, this is good, yeah. good for Netflix. It's definitely a good get for them, but... I'm going to file this also under Who Cares? Yeah. Because you could pretty much watch the entire run of Seinfeld just by tuning into TBS in one week. Mm. You know, they run 17 episodes a day. (laughs) Yes. Yes, I I couldn't agree with you more. So, I mean, the advantage is, I guess, these will be uncut, whereas I think TBS uh, has to cut some of those for a little extra time. Yes. I wonder if they'll have Puerto Rican Day on there, because Puerto Rican Day is not played on TBS. I think every episode will be played. I think that'll be part of the deal. Okay, because that's one that you cannot find on on cable, Puerto Rican Day. And I think... um, Got to buy the DVD for that. I think you will find new fans of the show by putting it on Netflix. Maybe. Which there's a lot of millennials that have never seen it. Which is stunning to me. Don't... Okay, if you're a millennial and you listen to the show and you haven't watched Seinfeld, do not start on like season one or season two. Go to season three, season four. The beauty, the beauty of Seinfeld is there only there's just inside jokes that you'll miss out on. You can go back and figure it out later. You'll be fine. It's not going to ruin the show for you. See, I wish you, I still had my Entertainment Weeklies from the 90s. Mm-hmm. My aunt subscribed to Entertainment Weekly. She lived down in Washington, D.C. And if ever we would go and visit her, she would just have like a big stack of, or she came up to Boston, she'd have a big stack of Entertainment Weeklies for me. And I would just go through them all. And and almost every episode had, uh, almost every issue had something Seinfeld related in it. Makes sense. And one of them was like a, you know, like a, a, a glossary, like a dictionary of terms <laughs> yeah. from Seinfeld. Nice. Like there's so many good things that there was almost like a compendium. Mm-hmm. Like you need to have these to watch them to understand the cultural impact of it. So you might watch the episode and hear master of your own domain, but not know about the impact of it until like you read these other things and say, here's what it became. Serenity now. Yeah, all of these things. Insanity later. They there there needs to be, and there probably is, and I just don't know about it, but there needs to be, you know, like they have the Star Wars companion, they have the Star Trek companions, mm-hmm. uh, the Twilight Zone companions that Marcus Acree wrote, where you're basically just, you need this to keep next to you. Mm-hmm. And then after you watch the episode, just read the chapter on that episode. Right. So you understand kind of the impact of what it was that you were seeing. Right. But when it comes to the quality of the show, I mean, don't get me wrong, I like them all. But if I'm showing to some, like someone who doesn't, I, I know I tried to show my girlfriend in college. She's like, I want to watch Seinfeld. I didn't have really a chance to watch it as a kid. Blah blah blah. I had all my dad, my parents had all of it. They had every every disc and, and whatnot. I started from the beginning with her, and then my dad tells me afterwards, like, well, after the fact, you can't start someone at one. They're not going to go be into it at first. Right. So start at three, four, and and work from there. I wouldn't start any 
It's yeah, not I'm, like there's a whole bunch of continuity issues you got to worry about. Exactly. I would do there's three. five characters to learn. Yep. Three, four. Then you can go back to one, two, and then you can go five through. I, was it seven seasons or was it ten? I can. I think remember. it was nine. Nine, nine. seasons. Okay, somewhere but in you, there. Just, you just need to know five characters: the four main and Newman. Yes. That'll get you by. And every everybody else Newman. that comes in, you can kind of you know crazy Joe Devola, all yeah. these guys. You can kind of explain to them as they go through. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, one one thing about Seinfeld though that I will say. We love it because we experienced it at a time when you could experience it. Somebody going back to it now with today's mentality, it will be very cringeworthy as you watch it. Yes, it will absolutely be cringeworthy. And I but I think for And not cringeworthy in the good way. Like we saw we're like, oh, how do you say that to somebody? Or how does that become a topic oh, that you talk about? Oh, you think I'm it'll like offend like, people and stuff. It will offend people now, especially there's there's a lot of Male female dynamic stuff there yep. that a lot of people will look at that and be like, oh, they're just objectifying that woman. Yes, they. Yeah, that's that is an interesting. So you need point. to look at it through the lens of the '90s and yeah. also realize it was innocent. It wasn't. It wasn't. I mean, in- everybody considers Jerry Seinfeld a fairly tame comic when you like as compared to his right. contemporaries. It's not even. <laughs> I mean, and and people get overly offended by some of the stuff that when they go back and they do it, but you have to understand. That the point of the show is that nothing works out for them. Yep. So Jerry is a jerk In that show, treats yeah. women poorly. Mm-hmm. And what happens? He's alone. Yep. So don't get so worked up about it. There's a morality lesson there that if you act like this toward people, this is how you end up. If I mean, honestly, Tim, I, what I say to people, if you're offended by a show, don't watch it. Hey, look at that. It's already happened. It's already been made. People have already made money. They're going to continue to make money off it. That, get over it. That guy they hired for SNL is already fired oh, before he got to be on the first yeah. ever episode. He's already fired yeah. for something that was not that offensive. Yeah, I cannot remember what it was. I saw the video, but I can't remember. Wasn't it about... Um, You're talking about the uh, how Chinatown started. Yeah... And that was He said that a while back. And, but he used the, the derogatory term for Chinese. Oh, he did. That's, yeah. Okay. Because I heard, I remember them doing the like the the, the letter thing. Right? It was the R and the L. They were switching that out. But it, that, might have been that wasn't other. so much the clip that got. It was I think it was uh, using the actual term. Yeah. Well, my but thing. Like, he he put out a good tweet about it where he said, "Listen, comedy is going to be offensive to people. It 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 is going to be offensive, and to it people. should be. I I do think it should be, but I do think that there are certain. <sighs> you just don't need to say that word. Right. It was really there was no reason to, to use that word. Yeah. But if somebody got upset because you were making a bunch of jokes about Chinatown, that's a different story. I agree with you. It, you, you when you go and use that word, though, it's like it's. I know there are other words that are going to be more offensive to people, but that's one of those that you just like. You should. I don't know why it crosses your mind to say something like that. And that was that from like 2013. That video. It was pretty recent. Yeah. Oh, oh it was recent. Like, oh. Uh, Not that like recent. Okay, it wasn't like 1997 years. when you can get away with saying certain things. Right. If now I will say, if he had said that in 1997, still not okay. But I would I would say to people who are bothered by it, it was a very different time. Oh, in, we didn't, yeah, we didn't have cancel culture then. Well, I mean, it's just we didn't have know, social media. You call it cancel culture, but I, I think Tim is just at some point you just need to realize like that bothers a, enough people where it's like you just shouldn't say it. It's, well, it's just like you shouldn't. Like it's also thinking that way that you can call someone a, a word that's offensive. Andrew Dice Clay is one of the the funniest people in the world, mm. even outside of the Dice persona. Like you know, he, he's he's done some very funny stuff outside of being the Dice Man. Mm-hmm. Can't get work. Because he's because he's the dice man. Yep. So no, people are like, oh, if we hire him, he's going to get up there and do the same nursery rhymes that he did in 1987. <laughs> and then, you know, but still, one of the funniest guys in the world can't get a job. I mean, at some point you got to adjust too. But if, for him, if you got enough money, then then you're fine. It's just it's just that reputation following him around. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, that's... you know, people are afraid to give him a shot when he's actually a pretty good actor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it, it's. You know, it, this is, uh, I don't, I mean, I can't say I've lived on this earth for a long time, but it's, it has been a lot of change in my lifetime. That's for damn sure. In the 27 years I've been here. Um, well, it, but not, not to dwell on this because I know we have other things to move no, on it's to, okay. but Eddie Murphy's coming back to do stand up. Yeah. And yeah. so, well, Chappelle just had that special too, and that did really well. I haven't gotten a no, chance it to did, watch it yet. It did well, but everybody is railing against him and mm-hmm. the things that he talked about in that special mm-hmm. and screw you because Dave Chappelle gave you exactly what we need right now mm-hmm. to kind Did of get he? past that and it was it was tamed by Chappelle standards I think that when it comes to how 
I just I'm still trying to learn like how other people re- react to it and stuff like that before I judge when it comes to it because it just there's so many there are some people who are offended by it and sometimes like okay I understand this when you talk about it further and then there are some people who's like what the they're f- not what are you talking about they're not offended by it they're offended because they feel they should be offended by it they're, no I've talked to some people who are legitimately bothered by it like they've given me examples about what happens to them in person with inter- inter- interactions with other people where it's like okay I understand it and then that's there are other different than the performance by a comedian though yes it is I agree with you 100% if you so and I, I that's are talking I, that's about that's what I'm saying I don't care, and I don't care normally you interrupt me, but like that was the point I was making. There are some people who I understand why they get offended by some of this larger stuff because of other things that have happened to them one on in one on one settings. Then there are other people who I don't know personally, but they lose their minds over certain things, and it's just like, guys, what do, what are you talking about? And, and seriously, it's so easy to avoid things you don't want to to like see. Like I have on on my go ahead. Well, I was gonna say if you know you're gonna get offended by a Dave Chappelle performance, don't watch it. It's very simple. No, I mean, that's the great thing about Netflix. That's you, very simple. You openly chose to watch that. So I have, obviously, I have the sports Twitter account that I use, and then I have the comics one, so I can mm-hmm. talk where I can talk about all this stuff freely, because I don't think, whatever, that's just my opinion. I don't want to cross them over right now. When it comes to the comics Twitter account, that is pure entertainment and fun for me. So guess what? I don't have, uh, you can't see Trump tweets on my feed. Mm-hmm. You can't see AOC tweets, tweets on my feed. I don't want to deal with any of them. And anytime I see any other crap, I block that account. Um, if it's someone that I like in in whatever, then I just, I tr- I don't know. I hope that I don't see it every once in a while. Political stuff pops up, but not a lot. On my sports account where it's work, like that's just what it is because it, sports and uh, and politics have are crossed over immensely. For whatever now. reason now. It's, it's the way it is now. But the, I, I can't ignore it there. But when I'm doing my fun stuff, which is what most people are dealing with on tw- like who are on Twitter anyways, you, it's not your job to be on Twitter. It is my job. So when I'm doing my fun stuff, I don't see it. I don't want to see it. I don't have to see it. So get out of my face with it. It's that simple a lot of the time. That's where I get a little confused. About, about the whole thing. We're not going to solve that problem today. No, but we will solve the DC problem. But first, we got to get to the comic book minute, and we got the drinking buddies too. So with the comic book minute, Tim, I'm curious on some of these. Uh, if you would read them or give them a shot, or if you wouldn't. Wes normally can't help me with this because he wouldn't read any of them. So for D- these are all first issues, okay? So DC Comics this week for the first issue, uh, for a first, it has Flash Forward, which is featuring Wally West. It's a short little series that he had... Something may have happened to him in another series, but he's the main focus here. Would you be reading a Wally West miniseries? We'll say, or like, I don't know if it's twelve issues or six issues. I don't. I forget. Probably if you're a Flash not. Guy. Okay. Probably not. I mean, I don't know. I I I'm I'm a Flash guy by association, mm-hmm. uh, where I don't mind when he is in kind of the 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 universe of the story. Yep. But I don't know how much I care about the Flash. On a regular basis as the main character. Fair enough. I probably won't read this. That being said, if John Wesley Shipp is watching the show, which he might be, <laughs> huge, huge fan of the uh, original 80s, 90s Flash TV show. Okay. Uh, well, hof- hopefully he heard that. Uh, then we got Year of the Villain. That's a ho- the whole event going on with DC right now. They're featuring Lex Luthor this week. Would you be interested in a Lex Luthor one-off? Ever. A one-off? Yeah, it's a one, well, just a one issue, yep. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, over at Marvel, and I will be reviewing Nightwing 64 this week. That comes out. Um, also coming out this week later on is Spider-Man 1, because you don't have enough Spider-Man stories at this right. point. Uh, but th- the interesting part about this one, this is written by J.J. Abrams and his son, Henry, which I didn't know J.J. J. Abrams ever wrote comics. How uh, old is his son? I, I don't know. If he's like six, I'm out. Uh, it doesn't look like... I mean, the art looked legit. It didn't look like it was a little kid book. The art's oh. by Sarah Pacelli. I didn't see the internal art, but the exterior art looked like legit. It was Mary Jane. She looks good. They're her normal self. I mean, I really like J.J. Abrams in general, but I also like him better when he's dealing with original stuff. Fair enough. I'd be curious to see how he handles this. I've never seen him on this medium. I don't know. I have no idea what to expect. I mean, I don't even know... Did he write, um, what was this, episode seven? Why am I drawing a blank on it? Um, uh, thanks. I just caught your, st- can't remember. Oh my God. Episode- Force Awakens. Yes. Did he write Force Awakens? Or he just uh, I believe so, yeah. Okay. So, okay. So I've seen him. All right. In that medium, I've dealt with him. All right. Speaking of Star Wars, Star Wars Age of Resistance, Ray and Rose have their one-offs. Star Wars has been doing a bunch of the stuff. They did it with the Republic. They did it with the, um, what was the, the what's the middle era called? The, not the Resistance. 
uh, the Rebels. Mm-hmm. So they do, they've been doing a bunch a bunch of one offs. They did it with Qui Gon, Darth Maul. They did I don't know if they did a Luke one, but I think they did a Han Solo one. All these characters, good and bad guys. They got Ray out this week and Rose this week. I'm so out on reading anything Rose related. Uh, you're not in on not into either one of them really. I would I might pick up the Ray one. I want to see them start doing stuff with these characters though. Do a little bit more. They just I, I, I feel like almost like there's a finality hanging over our heads. Yeah. So it's like, how invested am I going to get into them knowing that the end is near? But on their end or on your end? Like on DC and Marvel's end in terms of their investment in writing a story? Or do you mean yourself? No, I just mean like to me when the final movie comes out. Oh, okay. It's over. Yeah. It, well, we maybe. I mean, I maybe. didn't feel that way about the original trilogy. Like I would have read stories about those characters they, all the they time. They set it up where you could do it. But I just, I just feel like with these new characters, like it's three uh, movies and then we're done. I don't think so. Ray, I think, could last a while. She's not old. I mean, they play her real young in the movie too. But they're talking about this being the end of the Skywalker saga, so it all depends on how much she plays into that saga. I mean, if she's not a Skywalker, then she's fine. I mean, it's the end of the Skywalker. Oh, I think she could still be fine even if she was a Skywalker. Yeah. But. Yeah. So, anyways. Uh, there's a Wolverine annual out this week, too. I guess it's Wolverine 1. I don't know. Just the title. They still do annuals? Oh, yeah. They still do annuals. Annuals were always fun. Yeah. You know what else was always huge. fun? Huge. Giant size. Giant size were always fun. Those are like 100 pages, right? Or something yeah, crazy? That, well, still most of those are ads. But uh, Walmart know, you, does that. You got these nice, big, thick. You know, usually it was just like, uh, you know, four episodes kind of tied into one comic type of thing. But mm-hmm. The thing is, what they still four do. issues rather. Yeah, I know what you meant. Then there's Black Panther and the Agents of Wakanda. Personally, not for me. I don't read Black Panther. Yeah, not a fan. But if you like Black Panther, that's a new series coming out. I don't know if it's going to be a mini series or a full fledged one. The last thing that I did want to mention, I just saw this. Now this is issue number six. Those are all first issues. This is um, from Dynamite. So you might have to do a little bit catching up. Maybe keep your eye out for a trade coming up soon. I'm not sure. Uh, but Xena Warrior Princess has an ongoing series right now with Dynamite. Tim, would you be in on that if you could uh, get the first issues? No, I wasn't really a big <laughs> Xena fan or a Hercules fan. I did not know that. I, I loved those shows as a kid. For me, it was the Highlander show. And it wasn't there... Um Wait, there's a Highlander show? Oh, yeah. The Highlander show was amazing. That must have been before I was watching TV. Adrian Paul as, uh, as Duncan McLeod. Sinbad was the, the show that I liked with, with Zeno. That was a real show? There was, that actually happened? I thought there was. I always thought there was a Sinbad show. Yeah, Weston and I talked about it. Yeah, there's definitely a Sinbad show. I enjoyed it. Anyway, not, not, not that Sinbad. It's a different guy. I, know, like I know you didn't mean Sinbad the comedian. Yeah. <laughs> I know you meant Sinbad the sailor, like the original tale of Sinbad, which is where the comedian took his name from. Uh, Was he a sailor in, yes. this, in this show? Well, that was, I mean, the original Sinbad story is about a sailor. Uh, I remember th- this guy being kind of Hercules-like. Maybe. He's, so he's kind of like um, he's kind of like Odysseus from the yeah uh, yeah that yeah from the Odyssey. Sorry, when I think of sailor, I think of like pirates. I don't think of Odysseus. The Adventures of Sinbad. It was seven seven point one IMDb score. I did I get it wrong? It again? just it just must have been after I was you know watching syndicated TV on Saturday afternoons. Oh no, he, he is kind of pirate looking a little bit. That's yeah, weird. Sin, Sinbad's a sailor. Oh, I didn't realize that. I thought he, maybe it was so it was probably Hercules that I was into a little bit more. Anyway, uh, so that brings us to drinking buddies. All right, Tim. So this week, really tried to go off the rails with this one. We have Alfred Pennyworth, obviously DC Comics, Batman. And then we have the narrator, Tyler Durden. So it's really Edward Norton when it comes down to it. Who are you going out to get a drink with between these two? I'd go out with Alfred for a variety of reasons. Oh, do tell. First one is you're drinking higher end stuff that he's paying for. Ah, uh, you and... <laughs> So that's, well, that's always going to be my answer. Yeah, that's that's going to be my first go-to. All right, I got to factor that in going forward. Second of all, he has a very secretive history that he doesn't openly talk about that I feel like yeah. having a few drinks would kind of open him up. Yes. And then you realize like, oh, this stuffy butler guy is actually a badass. Mm-hmm. Um, also, if I get him to drink enough, he might tell me how to get to the bat cave. Oh, no, you don't. No, 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 no way. Yeah, you, don't know, let's, you don't know the power of my persuasiveness to drunk people. No. Nah. It's Alfred, though. And here's the other side of it. If you got that drunk with Tyler Durden, you're going to get yourself into some trouble. That's part yeah. of the excitement with it. Yeah, but it's excitement like if I got into a fight with him or something, or, you know, if he if if I got something, listen, you listen. know, some sort of an adventure out of it. 
If we're Tyler Durden, he might get you killed. He might get you killed. He uh, might get you killed. But I have another major problem with Tyler Durden. Okay, Give, what, let me let me. He give, won't shut the f up the entire time. All he does is talk. Tyler Durden doesn't shut up. The narrator does. So if you're going back and forth between the two, I feel like it would be an. See, part of what I like is you're talking about how you want to have story time with Alfred. You want to hear everything from him. I'd love to see what this lunatic is like. One on one, you don't see the fake Brad Pitt over there. You just see him rattling off, having a conversation back and forth. Like, what does what does he look like when he gets into Tyler Durden mode? Does like he get all like dark and start looking down, or does his voice change? We don't see any of that. Yeah, that'd be cool for about five minutes. I mean, I'm not trying to go out and you know have a married life with the guy. I just want to hang out with him for an hour or two and see what he's like. Get inside the mind uh, that is Tyler, the brilliant mind that is. He's think about it. He is kind of brilliant because he orchestrated that whole Fight Club thing, and, and it's everywhere, and everybody knew about it, and they know who he is, and it's like, you don't talk about Fight Club, and every, every single human being wants in on it. It's freaking bananas. And how, how does that not interest you? I'd want to pick his brain. I just want to— Because li- I'd end up like Bitch Tits Bob. That's how I would end up. Ah, uh, that's, the, that's the problem at the end of it all. Um, his name was Robert Paulson. Oh, is it? His name was Robert Paulson. His <laughs> name <laughs> yeah. was Robert Paulson. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. I think either one of them would be a good one. I Absolutely. Think, I think no, this is I think, I much think they, tougher than Jar Jar Binks and I don't Fire remember. Fist was the last right. one. Yes, I really should have gone with Francis because I could have made a case for Francis. All right. So that brings us to the main item for this week's show, how to restart DC's live action movies. So for those who – everybody knows with the movies that have come out already. Wes loves to dump on Wonder Woman. I love Wonder Woman. Tim has only seen a handful of DC movies because, for obvious reasons, Suicide Squad, huge disappointment. I think Man. Of, I, I did not like that. I think I think Man of Steel gets a bad rap. I think Superman is an incredibly difficult character. I didn't to do. hate Man of Steel. I didn't either. I didn't see Dan of Justice though. Dan of Justice. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's You're the I, one that told me to. Bring yeah. It up. Uh, I would I, never pick on you for a typo. Oh, uh, I. Yeah. Well, but, this, you know what, Tim. At my other jobs where I have to write all the time, I have to obsessively look over and make sure I don't get anything wrong because I don't have an editor to back me up. I am the editor. So with this, I'm like, screw it. He, yeah, just write it, and then I'm not even thinking twice looking at all. Grammarly would not have caught that. Grammarly would have been like, I love Dan Dun- Justice. Actually, believe it or not, Grammarly did catch it. Grammarly, and I just didn't look it over. Like, I'm not Actually, what's funny is, yeah, my grammar checker in Google Docs is picking it up too. Yeah, I I, I didn't even I, like I said I didn't look at it twice. I think Dan of Justice would have been a better movie. Dan of Justice would be something good the the, the scary movie people they should consider doing something yeah, like that. I the, think I think Dan of Justice is the way to go. BVS Dan of Justice, but what would you change the BVS out for? Anyway, BVDs like underwear. I do think they get I do think that the 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 DC movies aren't I think if the Marvel the MCU wasn't what it is I think the DC movies would do better, like the general public. I think they would. I'm not saying I'm DB. I am DB. Yeah, I got that right. Would necessarily give them a better grade, but I think people would look at it and say, "This is fun. This is exciting. Whatever." But now it's like everything has to mean something, and this is something that you and I have talked about quite a bit because I personally have come to enjoy the comics a lot more. I read all the current stuff. I'm not big into the old comics very much. Tim. For those who don't know by now, read all, a lot of the old comics growing up. Huge Starfire fan, uh, Batman fan, Superman too, or not really? Not so much, but I read it. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. That just shows you how big comics were back then. You weren't even that big into it, and you still paid to read that thing. So I would basically just get my hands on boxes and boxes and bags and bags of comics. Okay. So there were a lot of like bargain stores and stuff when I was a kid, and so it would be easy to just say, you know, here's $5. And then five dollars, I'd walk out of there with fifty comics. It's cr- yeah, because you can't do that anymore. They just they it was before the big collectability factor of them. Mm-hmm. So you could people were just putting like, oh, we don't nobody bought these comics. Go put them in a box there, ten cents each. Yeah. So it's it's really like a, a different never, animal now than it ever was then. Yeah, never ever happens. I mean, you get some that are not worth a ton, but you would show Lord. up at a yard sale and a mother would have put her, her kid's entire comic collection out for sale. Oh yeah, it's like that in baseball cards. It was the same thing too growing up. But the um, for you, I mean, not for me. I was I, I think I was little when that was still going on. You know the the problem with a lot of the comics then though too. Well, not really a problem, but it was there was near not nearly as many lines as there are now. 
They're like it was usually one title per character. Right. Maybe a, we, maybe a couple of titles if you're Superman. Then you have your Superman, your action there comics. There's so many now though, Tim. It's Spider-Man nuts. was the first one to really do that in my world. Okay. Where we had Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man, Web of Spider-Man, uh, Marvel Tales, Marvel Teen, like all these mm. different ones would have Spider-Man involved in them. Now it's really Spider-Man, X-Men, kind of. And then, definitely X-Men has two going on right now, but they're part of the same one. And then Batman has... has X-Men had... There was still Uncanny X-Men. Then there was... I believe there was just a straight X-Men book that started, I want to say, in the early 90s. And, Mm. oh, I don't... I think that might have been it for X-Men, but then you also had X-Factor. You had... X-Force. You had... X-Force came a little bit late in my comic reading. Oh, okay. Because that was like 91, 92. Mm -hmm. Um, Excalibur. Came around the same time. And what gets so confusing, too, is that like there was X-Men Red going on a little while ago. Alpha Flight, which is which awesome. basically Canadian X-Men. Oh, they're Canadian X-Men. That's right. I thought they were Canadian Avengers. I said that incorrectly because they have a they have a, an, an there was, Alpha Flight coming out now. There was West Coast Avengers, which was a different yeah. Avengers team. But I, I thought Alpha Flight, I was, dang it, I got that wrong. I no, because Wolverine was part of Alpha Flight for a while. Mm, I, I did not, I did not know that. Anyway, um... Yeah, when it came, I think well, I'm right. Anyway, either way, tell me look, if I'm wrong. Look, look, honestly, Alpha Flight. You're, if you're not reading it, you're not missing much. But there's so much. You talk about now, Tim. How back then there wasn't as many. Now it's like there's too much. I mean, mm-hmm. people love Batman, and that's why they keep buying Batman. But I just feel like they they try and force feed certain characters where it's just too much. It's like you got to recognize there are some characters people care about, and there are some. That have just and kind of slipped it, into irrelevance. It's like we we don't really like where this storyline's going, so we're just gonna start a whole new book. Yeah, that doesn't always work. Like as much as I kind of enjoyed Green Arrow, it got really, really political and they stopped it. And I think people just it didn't hit home with people where he was going so far to the left. And that's just the way it goes. Whereas Red Hood, I you know, I, I think they should do more with the Bat family as opposed to Batman, but they're they can't even figure what the hell they're doing with Nightwing at this point. But that kind of ties into all of what I'm talking. What my whole pitch would be with DC. I think there are two ways that they can go about this. One is how they're how it seems they're starting things off with Joker. Which, by the way, I think I saw that the day Joker comes out is like National Smile Day or something like that. Oh, that's good planning. Yeah, very well done. I think if you just did it where they're all um, not like anthology series, but they're just all one-offs. You can have them be like a spin-off, a solo thing of their of one character. You can include other characters too once in a while if you want. I don't necessarily need them to be origin stories, but something like Batman, White Knight, something like this Joker, where it doesn't seem like he is red. He's not Red Hood Joker. He just turns into Joker. I think that would work because as much as you want stuff to mean something and it's been huge for the MCU. I do think that some people would eventually gravitate towards like, oh, I can just see this and just enjoy it and it's just going to stand on its own. It's not so like overwhelming. Here's the problem. The cinematic universe is only as good. Let me me change change it around a little bit. Mm -hmm. The main characters of your cinematic universe will set the tone for your universe. Yes. And... Granted, so if we're looking at Marvel, Marvel building a cinematic universe, ideally, number one, you're starting from scratch. Forget who had the rights to what and how it all started. You just said to Marvel one day, hey, we're going to throw a billion dollars at you to start a movie franchise. Right. Obviously, they would start with Spider-Man. Yes. And number two would be the X-Men. Right. But I think those characters set the tone of what it is that you're doing. So you're getting that Spider-Man persona. Mm-hmm. And, and in, in the case of the movies, they actually started with Iron Man. So you're getting the Tony Stark persona. So you're getting these characters that are like, we're serious, we can fight, but we also have fun. And it's, it's it really not... It's sarcastic. It's not like, you know, it's, it's life or death, but you don't really feel like it's life or death, which is what makes it feel even more life or death. Yeah. And I think like you had a, a, a much more fun tone to it than DC. DC's problem is... Their their heroes are, they don't have the personality that the Marvel characters have. Superman is a boring ass mf'er. That's the biggest problem. And, and they just continue to try and hammer that home. He does not resonate with this generation. He's pigeonholed into being truth, justice, in the American way, and he always will be. And 
Batman is made to kind of be the 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 antithesis of that to some degree. Yep. And still you're playing in black and whites. Yep. And the fun is in the gray. Mm-hmm. And you don't have all, that with DC. I'm all about that gray area. All about it. The, the, my biggest thing that I would say to the people at DC and Warner Brothers right now is look at what Marvel did, right? They, 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 first of all, they took their time. They didn't try and jam it down everybody's throat like that. That was the dumbest thing you could have done with Suicide Squad and rushing the Justice League. As right. much as Justice League was not terrible, but again, I go, my expectations are always different than other people. I don't have I don't have as high of a well, bar. Well, first of usually. all, it seems to the general public like you're playing catch up with Marvel. Yes, and, you, and, you, and it seems like you're trying not just catch up, like you're trying to rush the catch up. Right. It's crazy. You had Wonder Woman. You hit a home run with that. Maybe that's where you start. But I would say, above all else. You brought up how it's Iron Man that started the show. I'm not saying you need to find a character like Iron Man, but I think you need to. What you need to consider is that he was not this big time lovable character that everybody thought was the greatest thing since sliced bread ever. He was never that until now. So find a character who you can take some liberties with, and who you can go and build around, and then and then like you said, the setting the tone is very important. But they, do they have that in their wheelhouse? What are they going to do? Start a Blue Beetle universe? Uh, you would say Booster Gold. You would say start with. Um, no, that's a different story. Okay. We'll get into that. So if I now if I'm trying to say where do I start this whole thing, I think that as much as you can't start with a group like you have with the Avengers. Or the Justice League, or the X, the X Men is obviously different, and that's why I'm gonna I'm gonna go here. I would start with Batman, but I wouldn't start with Batman. I would not start with solo Batman. Batman has this ro- this roster of kick ass Robins. Now, are they always great as Robins? Not necessarily. And and it's chronologically, the Robin story comes very early in the Batman chronology. Yes, exactly. And you could we, you could get into two of those Robins fairly quickly. The Dark Knight makes far more sense. If he's already lost Robin. Yep. Yes. So you could... Ha- Look, under the Red Hood, I mean, the cartoon, everybody likes it. The book, everybody likes it. You could start there. You have Nightwing already. You could bring Tim Drake into the fray. He's not in that... He's not in that... He's not with, he's not with Batman at that time, but he had been Robin because in Hush, Tim Drake was there. So... You could bring in Tim Drake. He's not that great, but you have the other two. You eventually work up to Damian Wayne. He's a freaking pain in the ass. But the the point is, though, Tim, that you know how Tim Drake is. Tim Drake is not Batman. He's he's different. He has that kind of. He has some sarcasm to him. He well, likes to have fun. Because the Robin character was the 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 Yang to Batman's Yin. It was exactly. It, it kind of it solidified who mm-hmm. Batman was, but at the same time, it also gave the reader. Yes. Some exposition and some comic relief as opposed to everything being introspection yeah. with the Batman character. And that's why I that's part of why Titans was received well because Dick the Dick Grayson character, the guy who's playing I forget the actor's name, but I loved that show. I didn't recommend it to Wes because I know I mean like I know kind of what Wes likes that's too much for him. He's not he's not going to appreciate it. He's not it doesn't mean anything yet. He, he, like if a couple more series, maybe he'll get into it. But I do think that Dick Grayson can be if you have him and you have Red Hood as your two guys and then you have Batman, that those are the three people you build around, I think you can kick ass. And you can find a way. And guess what? No one's going to care if you bring in freaking Barbara Gordon too. Like, that's fine. People are going to love her. The other thing is is they they we didn't need the Justice League. Mm-mm. We and, no. and all the stories can interconnect fine without the Justice League having to be present. In fact, in actuality... I would rather never. I'd, re, I'd want to never see the Justice League. I'm fine with never seeing the Justice because League because we didn't need them. Nope. We needed the Avengers. Right. We needed all those characters to kind of come together to tell this bigger story. Because alone, they're limited. Right. With the Bat Family, you aren't limited. You you start. You're there. telling stories that are on a smaller scale, so you don't need a superhero team up story. And what's, what the other thing that was so beautiful about what Marvel did in the past. Was or in, with the MCU, excuse me, was with like each passing movie, you were bringing in a new character. You were somewhere along the way introducing another one that you wanted to expand on later. Right. And whether that was a, in slight passing or in a big role, and then they could go into the next one. There were only a few that had their origin, and that's where they first started. With the, with Batman, Robin, and uh, I'm sorry, Batman. Uh, Nightwing and uh, and Red Hood, you can do that where you bring in 
all the characters. You have, especially with Nightwing, where you have the Titans, and you can, and then with each with each one, you have Donna Troy with with um, with Nightwing, who then can bring in Wonder Woman, and then you have with Red Hood, where there's Artemis, you could also bring in Wonder Woman there, Bizarro, all these different. The things. The problem with that though, Roy Harper. The problem with that is you're getting into characters that the average moviegoer wouldn't know who the hell you're talking about. Right, but did the and, average moviegoer know who Falcon was or Winter Soldier was before, and how good did Winter Soldier do? But I think those came in because you had enough of a draw with those other characters on their own. Mm-hmm. I don't think that you would have that same draw as you start to spread the DC universe a little thinner. But that's why... Batman, you, Superman, Wonder Woman, and then good luck with the rest. But that's why you have to start those two guys off with Batman. Because Batman is... people. I think people would know who, who Nightwing is more, more than... Maybe not. I don't know. But I think you start with them with Batman and you see them work against them. These are two guys who... Who worked with Batman in the past, but they really don't like him that much. But they're not the same person. One of them's a killer, and the other one, not so much. Like he likes, he'll push the envelope, but he's not like Batman at all. I mean, there's a, your whole first Batman movie in the series is the transition. You know, go yeah. from from uh, Dick to Tim, and have that be part of the story, and and you know, kind of tell the story of the Robins. Yeah, and and where we end up, and then you can kind of push people off. But it's still even that feels like it's a little bit too obscure. Okay. For people because... So what would you do then? I would actually say, like I said, you have to have... You have to have those characters set your tone. Mm-hmm. And you have to understand that you're not going to have that whimsical, fun universe. If you wanted to have a reason... I mean, outside of Crisis, of, for, uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths, outside of Dark Side, bringing in any of these characters, you don't need this big team up. And everything about the DC Universe felt like we're just going to build it toward the Justice League. Right. And now it feels like we have the Justice League. Now we're going to give everybody their individual movies, and then we'll have the Justice League team up again later on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, like, yes. it, it feels like it's 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 forced. You want it to be like, we're here, This you know, and then eventually if it happens, it happens. But we're here, and we're focused on doing what we're doing. If and, we're forced into a team up, we're forced into a team up. And not to mention, you know, the Avengers also had the, the benefit of not teaming up before they had to team up. You know, they were actually at odds with each other before yes. they had to team up. I mean, they teamed yep. up a little bit in Ultron, but still, like, you know, like, it wasn't the same. It was Civil War being like, oh, my God, like, these heroes can't work together. Right, but they were working together leading up to that in the first two. Right, but it wasn't it wasn't on the same level. No. It was, you know, because the, the threat wasn't of the same level. Right, but you could argue that Superman and Batman weren't on the same side at one point, too, in the course of things, and Wonder Woman was doing her own thing, Aquaman I, didn't want to be involved. I, I don't know what it is, but you just don't care about them. You know, right. even, even the... This su- all forced him. That's what it is, because you look at it, and it's all reaction. I think you have a good point. You're only as good... First of all, a protagonist is only as good as its antagonist. To some extent, I agree. To some extent, I think that there are good enough characters where Batman, like Bat, was Ra's al Ghul this crazy kick-ass character? When, no, in, no. In, in I'm Batman talking. Begins. I'm, I'm talking about. I, it's fine on a one-on-one basis. Mm-hmm. It's fine on a one-on-one basis. Oh. I'm talking about the team. The team is only as good as the threat that they're teaming up to fight against. Yeah, if the would, threat isn't strong enough, then why the hell do they have to team up? Steppenwolf was not the. Well, they did need to team up against Steppenwolf, but once you got Superman, you were all set. That's, that, well, that's and the, that's the problem. You, Superman pigeonholes you. Yeah, and that's that's what they did. That's what that was one of the things that I know we've talked about it a little bit, but how Marvel utilized Captain Marvel in the final movie, I mean, the, in Endgame, was perfect because they they showed she is immensely overpowering. She can kick Thanos' ass, but once he gets a stone, mm-mm, sorry, sister, you can't hang. No one can. So right, like that's what they, they, and they, they, no, they've been able, unable to do that with Superman. Superman either needs to just fly in at the end to help them out when it looks like they're just not going to win, or he has to be kind of the Superman that they were setting him up to be. I thought Man of Steel, where mm-hmm. I could do it, but you have to learn how to do it on your own. Yeah, but I don't. Yeah, you know, I don't understand how so- you can have a Superman built through eleven seasons of Smallville that works being. A human and an alien and a god all at the same time. Yeah. And you can't figure out how to do that in a cinematic movie. It's crazy how Smallville like did so well. And it's like now you just have no clue what to do with Superman. It was it's because they they have it in their head that he has to be this great and part of it was because Man of Steel took that idea because they they wanted to have that theme of 
an alien. Like they they mm-hmm. they wanted to kind of make it that how would America handle the outsider? Yeah, and they had to put like a a, a, a political subtext to it mm-hmm. that really kind of. Help to pigeonhole that. I'll tell you what, like I just I'm thinking about it now with Brightburn and the possibilities that they have using super a Superman type character as a villain, they could they could kick ass with what they have going on right now. I really like that idea and that concept, but I just I know you can't have the DC universe without Superman. I agree with that, but you don't need to have him like you have him on a on a bigger role where he's constantly off in space and in the same thing as Captain Marvel. They don't have you guys. They don't have Batman here helping out. They don't have I mean Green Lantern, how often is he away dealing with other crap? He right. has to. So they don't have Green Arrow in Star City or Seattle, however you want to look at it, or Flash helping out. All these different things. That's what I want to see. The other thing too, Flashpoint. That would be another one that would be pretty the, awesome. The other issue too with the DC or Injustice, universe too. As opposed to Marvel is it doesn't have the same self-awareness that Marvel has. Mm-hmm. So the you know the fact that they're not what happens in the DC movies are like, "Oh, here's another hero that I didn't know existed." Like mm-hmm. now we have to figure out how we're going to work together. Like there's a very self-aware oh, world yeah, yeah, yeah. built in in the Marvel universe yes. where it's like, "Okay, we kind of all know of each other and mm-hmm. hey, it's great, you know, when Spider-Man shows up in Civil War, yeah. And basically wants everybody's autograph. Yeah. Like that shows that there's that self-awareness in there. And part of that self-awareness actually came outside of the MCU because I honestly think as much as they were kind of building that type of a tone, I think throwing Deadpool into the mix mm-hmm. with, in the Fox version of the, the Marvel Universe, that really took it to a different level. Right. Because oh, yeah. now we can make fun of ourselves. Yes. And now we can have fun with ourselves. And DC doesn't have that, save for one guy, but DC doesn't have those type of characters that can have that kind of fun. Do you think, so, so, I do think, wait, I do think they have some characters, maybe not have fun with it, but like, I know, I remember distinctly reading, uh, was it New 52 Red Hood, and he was hanging out with Roy Harper and, uh, and Starfire, and then Superman shows up, and then it's like, oh, dude, like, they they have some four-letter words that they have, they want to share with him, they want no part of him, they hate him, and all this stuff, all all three of them don't want to deal with Superman. I think Barry Allen Flash in the comics was kind of like a, a little bit of a, a smart ass mm-hmm. you know I think kind of like I mean it's, it's hard because like the characters all kind of exist in, in their own solo worlds I wouldn't too. hate it if that's what they did though if they had like a lot of these characters we, we have the people that we like working with and then there are some of you who can go piss up a rope you know what I mean like right. I want no part of you like um, you know like Plastic Man doesn't take himself seriously right yeah and when they've, I hate they've, those powers though, man. But they've teamed him up with other characters, mm-hmm. and and made it like you know, you see Plastic Man and Batman. Batman's kind of sucked down. Like you, you know, who I really want to see a, a Batman exist is that give it a try one time. Don't make everything Frank Miller, Dark Knight. Mm-hmm. Take a chance one time and do a Batman Brave and the Bold, like the like oh. the way they presented the character in that cartoon series. Okay, have it be like that for a change and see how that resonates with the audience. Mm. But. You need that man still does well with people, no matter what, though. Like, that's the thing that's so freaking And I still think he still would like that, but it would give you more storytelling options. Yes. Yeah. As opposed to having this lone guy that likes to work alone and sees everybody else for being not quite up to the level that he wants them to be at, and, and now all these other issues. Now, the way we're talking about it, we are talking about it like you're creating a whole universe again. But it's different because the tone isn't like we're we're making this movie to get you to the next one to get you to the next one. I want where it's like we're just like it's like Wes always says, self-contained, not to the point where it doesn't have an impact on the other people, but where you just focus on now, like like as a director, like I'm focused on making a kick-ass movie right now, and then I'll tie the other stuff in later. We'll figure give, it out after. Give me a scene where Bruce Wayne's sitting in the Batcave watching Superman save Metropolis on TV and says, "Sure, it's real easy to do when you're an alien." Yeah, yeah. you know, have a little bit of that that idea. Idea that that self awareness and 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 not taking themselves so seriously, which mm-hmm. is why, and I know that you are waiting for me to bring this up. I am because it's your pitch. But Ambush Bug fits into that universe. Ambush Bug is the DC Comics version of Deadpool. Well, he's before Deadpool, is he not? He de- he definitely came out before Deadpool. Yeah, but he he will bring to that universe what Deadpool brought to Marvel. Now, what are his powers? Because this is where I you, I don't know anything. He can teleport. Oh, that's, that's, that's really that's, it. That's useful though. And it doesn't always work right. Like from spe- like from like we're talking like nightcrawler teleporting kind of. Yeah, he just pops in and out. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, so it, it and it doesn't always work. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's some muddy stories behind his origin story. Is he really just a giant humanoid bug, or is he a, a man in a bug costume? 
Most most of the origin tends to say that he's a man in a bug costume named Aaron Schwab. And he's basically like a metahuman. And he came about, basically, he was a bad guy originally. Mm-hmm. And he was trying, you know, he was trying to use these powers for his own personal gain and happen across Superman. And, like, he's a super fan of Superman. <laughs> and he just got to the point where he was so annoying. And he would, he humanized Superman. To the point where, like, he would annoy him and it would be like, oh, like, Superman can't just, you know, blast him away and say, go away because he's Superman. Mm -hmm. He won't do that kind of thing. So how does, what, what, like, how does he keep working on his nerves and how does Superman handle that? Right. And then he kind of became this um, omnipotent voice of the DC universe where he would crack jokes about every other character in the course of his own book. Okay. But you know, like uh, Lobo was a big character at the time. Oh, that's another one too. And he would make fun of Lobo all the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, and and Keith Giffen, who created Ambush Bug, had another series called Thriller. They would always make jokes about Thriller at, at Keith Giffen's expense. Of course, he's writing these jokes himself. Now, I've seen Lobo against Deathstroke. I haven't read a ton of Lobo, though, as much as I would like. Definitely somebody I want to go back and read more about. Has, how does Lobo fare against Superman? I'm assuming you've seen them. Is it pretty much the same as everybody else? Yeah, I would think so. I don't. Okay. I mean, I don't. I don't see it being any different than anybody else. I just okay, because that would be that would be an interesting one on one. Let me, I let me give you just a little bit of ambush bug backstory. Of course, because I, I definitely want to have you read the comics. I'll I'll bring them to you at some point. Well, I do have access to the DC Universe app now. Are they on there? There's only a few. Okay. Um, if ambush bug number one is on there, then it's worth checking out. Okay. But I think the last time I checked, it was and I it was like different one-offs of different stuff. Okay. Um, which, unless you read the first ambush bug of his limited series, the rest of it kind of doesn't make sense because there's a lot of jokes relating back to that. Okay. But basically, so, he finds a, a a baby doll that somebody had thrown out, makes him his sidekick, Cheeks the Toy Wonder. Cheeks, he leaves the, the doll to, to defuse a bomb. And obviously, the, bo- the doll does not defuse the bomb. And the bomb blows up and the doll dies. Well, the doll gets destroyed and he takes this personally and like i lost my son and like he turns this into like his brooding you know moment at the end of the first comic he goes to a fast food place to try to get something to eat to take his mind off of this and who turns around and serves him his meal dark side and it's like a splash page finale like dark side like oh my god what's gonna happen and then the second issue like the first panel he pulls out a pin and pops the dark side, and it just turns out it's like a balloon and it deflates. <laughs> stupid, stupid yeah. stuff like that. Yep. You know, I think you time remember, yes, I remember you telling me this. It's off like the air, it's yeah. like Batmite. Yeah. You know, it's like that same type of character where yeah. it allows DC with its overly stupid seriousness mm-hmm. to come down to a fun level. Yeah, you need to have people that can characters that can kind of combat that. DC is not fun. No, but DC, they are exciting. DC is badass. This, it is badass. But it's not fun. Right. You don't often read a DC book and laugh. No. But no, you'll I read a Marvel read book and laugh. The only person who ever, uh, that I read that ever like, I get at least a chuckle out of is probably Nightwing. And even then, it's like dad jokes up the wazoo. It's like, so I can really do without that. But either way, yeah, I, I think that there's value for Ambush Bug. And guess what, Tim? Everybody could say, oh, who's that character? Who's that character you brought up? He's an unknown. Nobody knew Deadpool. That's my thing. That's why when you say some of these characters are like unknown, well, guess what? It will it will eventually translate if you integrate them with the right characters. That's the thing. You have to have the right people with them, and you just got to know where to draw I, the I line. Mean, and with Ambush Bug, you can just do whatever the freak you want. That being said, I want Ryan Reynolds to play Ambush Bug too. Yeah. Like, like it's just, it's, but it's that, you need that type of a, a mentality. Exactly. To- and, but you say how he's with Superman in his origin, no one's going to care where his origin's from. You'll right. make, they, like it's, it's just have him care. show up. Exactly, but that's with 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 Marvel and the MCU. I like Captain America. Everybody knows who Captain America is, but who really read Captain America after like what the the nineties? Right, he was pretty boring. Right, he was lame. I mean, I didn't really even read him in the eighties. If I was reading uh, Captain okay. America growing up, it was older Captain Americas. So I can't. I mean, and now you go to if I go to the Toy Vault, it's like they have, or Newberry, it's like. You have Captain America up the wazoo. They can't sell that stuff fast I, enough. I, I, I could tell you, I couldn't care less about Captain America, Iron Man, like, uh, you know, even Hulk to a lot of the degree. These are characters that are Yeah, like, Hulk's another guy who I couldn't care about. Avengers I, I, was created because those 
characters didn't yes. sell books that well on their own. Exactly. You can't like in these char- and I mean, oh god, there's so I actually bought a Captain America recently cuz like I want some words he's a little bit darker. And all there really is is um the one where he's on height where he turns out he's a Hydra agent and all this crap. I haven't read that one yet. My brother has it. Secret Empire. But like that's 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 it. Other than that, it's like Superman with, without being able to fly in laser vision. He's beatable, but it's like the same personality. I, I like Chris Evans. Uh, Chris Evans' Captain America is a little different. So I would say, no, he's the same thing. I think he's, a, if you read the comics, he's like a little bit, you know he's different. Yeah, he's he has a little bit more um, humanity. Humili- humility to him. Yeah. And it's more like a, I'm I'm this guy that was thrown into this situation. I'm going to make the most of it. Yes. As opposed to being like Super Boy Scout. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the the other problem with uh, and that's the thing like uh, and I know that people don't believe it but like nobody cared about the Avengers no they didn't it was like when they were doing the Avengers at first I was like oh, okay you only have the Avengers and the and the characters that you do because they were the ones that they had the the the, the licenses for and that's why what Kevin Feige did is even more amazing I think to any comic book fan who's like who followed it for a, just a little bit of time because like. Your cash cows in Marvel are Spider-Man and the X-Men, particularly Wolverine. The movie that won the Oscar was the character that nobody gave a crap about. Mm -hmm. Nobody cared about Black Panther. Right. You know, uh, he represented a a, a culture shift for African-American kids that were reading comics. But there wasn't a huge call but even when for I, more Black yeah. Panther stuff. When I saw Robert Kirkman's special on, uh, was it the History of Comics, mm-hmm. I think it was called? And he did a whole thing on on the black community and everything. And, and that was part of it. But, I mean, there was so much of the stuff that expanded. And you have Spawn, who's black, too. A lot, of the, a lot of the black community, too, also didn't want anything to do with Black Panther because it was being created and written and put out by a white guy. Yep, And he was also in Africa. He wasn't an American. Right, like, so that that was the other thing too. I think Luke Cage was important, but even then, he's only translated so much. Uh, but either way, I think that where 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 are we going? But the point of all this is, is these are the characters who are not the big deals, who are not making you a ton of money. Mm-hmm. So that's why when you say people aren't going to know these other characters as well, yeah, maybe not. But if you stick them with the right people, you stick them with the right guy at first and show them off. Casting will take Ooh, care of it. They just the 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 more minor characters in DC have far less substance than that's, the minor characters what, in Marvel. More, but that's more wiggle room to take liberties and do what you want to do. I mean, we talk about Iron Man, who was not this likable character, and then and then freaking Robert Downey Jr. turned him into what he wanted him to be. Yes, there were similarities, I mean, but there were differences. Can you turn Booster Gold into a character people will care about? I don't know, but if but guess what, Tim? There's a lot of wiggle room there, isn't there? You can take liberties where you want to, right? I mean, I guess it's not like you're going to piss off the Booster Gold fans. Yeah, I mean, if they do, then you know what? That, how many of them are there that you're going to piss them off? Right. And then the same, and then there's, but there are other characters. Well, who I are, mean, I, I guess you can say, look at they took one of the the lesser known DC characters and made it into a movie that people enjoyed with Cap, with Shazam. Oh yes, yeah, people loved. Yes, yeah, Shazam was great, and then Wonder Woman was another character too who was. Well, who I mean, she's popular? She's, but she's on the Mount Rushmore. She's on the Mount Rushmore, Tim. But I mean, do you, did you? Well, there was she, a cultural I, impact. And I stuff. would argue yeah. that she's on the Mount Rushmore of any comics. But you, but again, taking taking liberties, right? By the way, also has the greatest backstory of any creator ever. Yeah, that is that is yeah. If you can go and find Robert Kirkman's history of comics, they do a whole there's special. A, there's on a movie too that they made about it. Really? They made like it's a theatrical nuts. movie about it. It's nuts. Um. Fine, you want to put on the Mount Rushmore? I mean, I don't, I don't know the readership and everything. I just, I looked at it and said, uh, she's going to be too overpowered, but she wasn't at all. She was, I mean, she obviously kicked ass. But either way, talking about changing a character and everything, I know I've talked to people who read um, Jason Todd as Robin before Red Hood was everything. I only know, like, I wasn't reading that. I, I did, I never picked those issues up. I didn't know Jason Todd as Robin. I knew him as Red Hood first, and then went and read Robin stuff later. He's insufferable as Robin. Red yeah. Hood? He's still a pain in the ass, well, but he's a and, badass, too. And you know that because you brought up Red Hood to me and told me it was Jason Todd. I'm like, why would I read you that? You were one of the people. Because I'm like, I know Jason Todd. I wouldn't care about him. Yep. You know, And but, then you read him, and then you're like, now makes, I know why you a like difference. him. Yeah. I mean, and I talked to, again, my, my comic book guy, he set me up with the new DC collectible Red Hood. I got it the day it came out or whatever. I like I was telling him months before, save it for me, save it for me, because I know once you get them, they're going to sell out. They had four, and they were gone the day they, that they sold out, other than mine. You know what's it's funny? Just quick, they just, they, Red Hood is huge now in the comic community because you know they've taken a turn with him. DC had in its wheelhouse the property 
that it needed more so than Batman, Superman, and all that. If they had done more with the Watchmen, yeah, because that well, series that now. series comes out next month. Yes, I'm and, very excited for that, and it's going to change everything all over again. You think so? I saw the trailer for it. Mm-hmm. It's like no, like we're past the point now where superheroes are superheroes. Oh, okay. like yep, yep. we're past that point. Like we're not even going to be like nice. that. That we're not going to think that it's that cool anymore. They have. Have you watched the boys? No, I haven't watched it yet. Amazon, uh, right? I'm, yeah, I'm only a couple episodes into it, but that's... Heard nothing but good things. That's kind of like where superhero movies should be. Whoa, hey, you all right there? Yeah, I was trying to... I had to burp. I didn't want to burp into the mic. That's kind of where superhero movies should be, where, you know, okay, there's heroes, but what does that mean to everybody else? Yes, and yeah. that's why I... And that's why I, like... That's why, to bring it all back to where I started, that's why I like Robin. I mean, that's why I like starting with Nightwing and with Red Hood because Batman is somebody that everybody looks at and says, yeah, Batman is the man. I know he, he had the stuff with Superman, but like Batman's the man. You don't mess with him. You don't question him. Superman can question him because he's Superman and if, those other few characters. But if you're not like on that upper echelon of heroes, you don't, and even then they don't question his intellect. But then there are the kids who've worked with him for a long enough time to know he's not perfect and he can be kind of a dink and he's got his own issues that, that, like, that you have to deal with. These are the kids who are going to fight him back and who are going to step up and the issues and say, is the big thing. Beat me up. The issues are a big, big thing. The characters in the DC universe don't embrace those issues. Mm-hmm. We only know about them kind of extra, extraneously. Mm-hmm. So the, the, the problems... And it's just, it's the differences in how Stanley created the universe to begin with. Is he made these people humans, even if you're talking about, you know, Captain Marvel, you're talking about not humans, but people who are human and take on the challenges of being a hero. Mm -hmm. And every Marvel character has that dichotomy of, I've been put into this position, what do I do with it? Mm -hmm. And the, the, the superiority of the DC heroes doesn't work anymore. No, it doesn't. You're dealing with characters that are created in the 1930s and 40s. Because even Wonder Woman, who's a superior character, she starts off so innocent and, uh, and naive to the world around her. Sure, she's got all these powers, but she doesn't know what's in right and wrong. In that particular version of Wonder Woman, yes. yes. But that's, but that's, but that's kind of what you need to be able to do. You have to do with a power a character who's kind of overpowering. You don't get that with Superman. Because yeah. he grew up in that world, and the, he's so strong. The DC characters' problems are they're too powerful, yes, and they're too serious, yes, and they're too. Well, and some of them are just like you're, they're beyond reproach. That's what I mean with Batman. Right, Batman's beyond reproach. Not if you bring in Batgirl too. That's an, that's another one that the world I think would be ready for. Because you talk about Wonder Woman, you get the first lead superhero, then you get Captain Marvel, Marvel who's a stronger version, right? Which, and people embrace her to some extent still. You bring in Batgirl, you have Batman. And she's a female version. You can do a Batwoman too. There are differences, obviously, you know, but people love to make fun of the Adam West Batman. <laughs> but when you think about it, first of all, that was very on point with the 1940s Batman. Mm-hmm. So the the Batman of the 40s and 50s that led to the Batman of the 60s, it was it was completely on the nose because that's how he was in the comics. But when you think about it, that's closer to what Batman should have been than mm-hmm. the Christian Bale Batman. In a, in a sense, it's just a guy mm-hmm. in a costume. That's what he is. Right, but, I mean, he... Batman's power was always his intellect. Right, and that's what he became at Bale. He was still very smart. Right, but I'm just saying, like, it didn't have to be this, like, badass fighter guy. Like, you can put some more humanity back into the Batman character. You, you and I think they will with Pattinson because yes, you, I don't think he can be a badass. No, uh, we'll see. We'll see. I don't I don't know that he necessarily can, but I think that if, if Bale didn't bounce and they kept with Nolan, that DC would not be in this the position that it's in. DC would be fine if you had mm, Nolan kind of running the show. I'm worried because if that had happened, then you would have had Joseph Gordon-Levitt as Batman. Ooh, that's a good point too. Yeah, where his name, his real name is Robin, right? That, yeah. that was that. I remember when I first saw it. I think I was kind of young. I was like, "Oh, that's cool." And then looking back, I was like, "That is such lazy writing and it so was terrible. so bad. It was so dumb." I mean, Joseph Gordon-Levitt as Batman is one thing, but just like your real name is Robin. Shut up. Anyway, um, 
do you have anything else before we do our on my mind? Because I just looked at the clock and no, saw where we were. No, I think that's. I mean, I think we fixed it. So one of us gave one of us gave them enough ideas. Uh, I but mean, we definitely give them enough ideas. They're not going to gonna listen. They should. But Casey Walsh, the editor of Geeks Worldwide, one of the places that hosts the show as well. Of course, we're on fourteen twenty WBSM YouTube channel. You can rewatch this in addition to listening to us in just audio form. But he always retweets the stuff, and he's always you know. I'm I'm just, I'm community. just gonna put it back out there one more time. Mm. DC, if you're listening, give me control of ambush bug. <laughs> Keith Giffen's not doing anything with it anymore. Mm-hmm. Give give me control. You know I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna draw it, but no, I, no. I will write it, and I will give you the character that you need. Okay. I will give you your Deadpool. I will give you your fresh take on your entire line of heroes. Okay. Just give me control of Ambush Bug. I'm totally down with that. All right, and put us I would say put us on your board of directors when it comes to movies, but that's just a nice little throw in at the end. No, no, you're definitely part of the team. Oh, oh, oh the Ambush Bug team? Yeah. Oh, okay, awesome. All right, I'm totally in then. Full full boring. All right, um, now, Tim, obviously we've had other stuff going on. You've been busy today with work, and I have been as well. Um, has there been anything else, though, on your mind leading up to the show? Well, I'm going to cheat a little bit, oh, Okay. and I'm going to... Uh, utilize some of what I used on Spooky South Coast this past week. Oh, yes, yes, Where yes. I talked about, uh, we did a what we call, there's this guy, Chris Balzano, who's been coming on our show for a long time. Uh, I call him an analytical folklorist. Oh. Uh, because he looks for the story more than he does the fact, and he likes to break down the story and, and see where it where it all comes from. And so we call these Balzano breakdowns, and we did a, Bal- a Balzano breakdown this past Saturday night of It Chapter 2. Oh. And kind of the whole retelling of the it story, the way that it's been handled uh, under under this new format, and we really got into some some deep deep stuff. So you can check that out, spookysouthcoast.com or wherever you get podcasts. But what I found to be the most interesting part about it is, in just the course of the discussion, we realized that coming of age movies have changed in the amount of time. From when I was a kid growing mm-hmm. up in the eighties and seeing movies like Stand By Me and The Goonies and things like that. Yeah. Coming of age movies have completely changed between our time and your time and, and what's coming out now. Yeah, for sure. For kids. So never thought about that though. I've been thinking a lot about how, you know, how much w- what does it mean because if we're shaped by the movies that we watch, how is that shaping this generation differently than it did us? Oh wow. So it's it it really is a, a much deeper thing than just on the wow. surface yeah i never would have thought of that that's pretty wild because the it the, the it kids when we read it yeah it was about you know kind of dealing with uh the past traumas of your life and how they affect you as an adult mm-hmm. but the way that those kids dealt with it in the book and in the 1990 tv miniseries it's different than how the kids dealt with it in the new retelling because the the people who are watching it would respond differently now so hmm. That's pretty wild. I never thought about. It. I never that that is some next level stuff. So you came up with that how the the um, how it's impacting the kids now. Not not Balzano. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I mean, it was you know it's, we, it's, we, it's, we yeah. talk it out just the same yeah. as we do on this show. It's still it's, it's that's wild. All of that's wild. So that's on Spooky South Coast, and that was that was the most recent episode. So that yes. would have been what the the fourteenth. Yeah, right? I still have to upload it to the iTunes and everything. But. Oh right, because you left it running the entire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, so for my on my mind, like I said, Wes got married this weekend, and oh man, Tim. So is getting married on your mind? Is that what you're saying? Getting married is the last thing that's on my mind. <laughs> okay. I stayed up all night long. Wes, I mean. I would have thought, you know, if someone gets married, they just want to spend the rest of their night with their wife, you know, have sure. some fun. And we, we, I stayed up with Wes and his wife and a couple other people till probably three. Didn't Wes realize that's the last night of his life that he's guaranteed to get lucky? <laughs> Is that how it works? Yeah. I'm not married, obviously. I have no idea. Oh, that's I a mean, bummer. I mean, he'll have a birthday he's got, and he'll have the honeymoon. He'll have a birthday and he'll have the anniversary. Yeah. But that's it. He's on the honeymoon right now. That doesn't that's nothing. Mm, I mean, it depends on how busy and, and how you know what you're doing on the honeymoon. Oh man, poor if you like, you have if you have activities planned. You I know. Yeah, I can't see. Eh. On the one hand, I could see Wes having a ton of activities planned and having his entire day planned out. <laughs> but, and then you get back and you're tired and you pass out. But I could also see Wes saying like, "We're just not going to do anything." I don't know which one he. I, I would probably tend to go with the former. I don't think they're just going to pass out though. They're they're madly in love. I mean, like they. I don't know if they were like. 
you know, a few, I don't think they've been together five years. So I don't know about like that three year mark, but like right now, like seeing how happy they were and they're perfect for each Everybody's other. Everybody's happy on their wedding day. Well, so, I mean, they got the, the entire I'm night they were fine. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just, the entire night they were fine. And I'm, I'm, I'm going out on a limb and saying, that these two crazy kids film. are going to make it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I always want. I mean, I always want to say that. I'm, I'm just yeah. being the the goofy voice of pessimism. You're, I, you, I wish them all the best. You are always the voice of pessimism. Yeah, pessimism. I'm just having You're fun. You're just being yourself. Um, I'm basically wessing Wes the way Wes would wess us. That is exactly what he would do, and he wishes he could say it that way. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was a fun time, and I'll tell you what, though, man. So I stayed with them till like three, three thirty. I then I stayed out a little bit longer. Didn't go to sleep till I had to drive an hour home from the Cape, from Falmouth mm-hmm. to Fal- to Fall River. What did they do at Seacrest? What did they do it at Seacrest? No, it was like uh, Massett or something like that. I don't know. Oh, okay, like a golf course. No, it was right. It was like on a lake. It was a beautiful. Like, oh, so, I don't know. It was um, it was a small lake. And uh, it was an outdoor wedding, and they had a hall, they had a deck in the back, and then where they were staying was right next to the deck. It was kind of cool, too, so we didn't have to really walk much at all, but you could walk around. It was nice. But, man, oh, I was feeling it on Sunday. It was really bad, and it was an open bar, too, and and I knew I wasn't going to go ho- home right away, so it was like, ugh. It was a uh, – Brendan Curie was there, too. It was it was a good time. It was a so long So basically everybody but me. Everybody but you was there, n- not even remotely the case. I think um, I think that was just Wes's plan because he figured, you know, if Tim drives Uber, maybe we're going to need an Uber driver. We got to make sure that Tim's not there. Did you end up having to work after your show on Saturday? No, I, I went home. Ah, uh, bummer. Anyway, I uh, actually went home and watched the rest of the Wu Tang show. Oh, you did, which is phenomenal. And what is that on? Uh, Hulu. Hulu. Okay, so for those out there looking for something new on Hulu or to rewatch something on Hulu, uh, the Wu Tang show is there. Other than that, we, uh, at, like normal, TBD for next week. We will let you guys know um, right before the show starts next week. 